Welcome back. It's David Wiss, registered dietitian with the California Dietetic Association, Los Angeles District, that's LAD. We're talking about research because it's so important for other dietitians to collect and publish data. Previously, we discussed the differences between qualitative and quantitative research. We talked about sampling and we talked about the importance of randomization. Today, we're gonna to talk about validity which are standards by which research is often judged. In other words, an analysis of the evidence's strength, describing the quality of the findings. Internal validity poses the question, is an observed relationship causal? In other words, can we actually determine cause and effect? Can we accept a relationship between variables? I'll give you an example. Suppose there was a two-year anti-obesity grant in an elementary school that included nutrition education with the dietitian, gardening, and physical education equipment and instruction. Let's say the outcomes were BMI, which is quantitative, fruit and vegetable knowledge and preference, which is qualitative, and let's say that both of them yielded statistically significant positive findings. But in this case, there's so many different variables, you couldn't say that it was just the PE or just the nutrition or just the gardening. Um, you could say that all of them had an effect, but at the same time, over the course of two years, it's possible that other events may have occurred, such as changes in the parents or changes in the society as a whole that impacted the outcomes of the study. These are known as confounding variables, and these are potential threats to internal validity. The biggest threat to internal validity is non-randomization of the sample or other research methodology. As discussed, confounding variables describe other potential influencers, and there's so many in a two-year period, possibly. Other threats include small sample size, as discussed in previous modules. For example, a school with 25 students wouldn't give you strong findings versus a school with 500 students. Poor follow-up, uh, also known as attrition, can also lead to biased findings. If you started with 500 students, but say some students moved away, Say some students dropped out or graduated. Having 240 after two years may not yield very internally valid findings. Uh, reliability and validity of the measurement tool can also threaten internal validity. For example, if the survey tool was not validated, it may contain fruit and vegetable and knowledge preference questions that were culturally biased or perhaps age sensitive. In the next segment, we're going to talk about survey studies in much more detail. External validity is a description of the generalizability of a study. In other words, can we infer, infer the relationship that was determined to other people, places, and times? External validity is a moot point if there's no internal validity, but once internal validity is described, we can pose the question, maybe it's just these people, maybe it's just these places, Maybe it's just these times. For, for our example, we would ask the question, would this grant work in other schools, in other cities, of students with different socioeconomic status? Can the findings from this study apply to middle school students? Could the fruit and vegetable questionnaires that were gathered from the children be applicable to adults? Uh, so external validity describes the relationship between the sample and the population. If there's no random selection and poor control, the sample does not represent the population. Without external validity, conclusions are drawn for the sample, not for the population. External validity can be improved, however, by replicating the study over and over again. Different people, different places, different times. Any study can be severely compromised if threats to validity are not managed. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about survey studies including tool validation and inclusion and exclusion criteria. Stay tuned. There's so much exciting stuff coming your way this year from LAD. That's David Wiss, and I'm signing out.